tell you, this crowd is making it so I can hardly hear my own voice. They are indeed raring to go. It's game four of the World Series between the Miami Marlins and the Cleveland Indians. Hi again, everybody. Matt Vaskersian. Welcome to the World Series here on the show. With me are Eric Karros and Steve Lyons. And Steve, lots of storylines here as we approach the start of Game 4. And you can see the results right there. It's been about what we'd expected up to this point. Very tightly played, very tightly contested series so far. It sits at two games to one right now. But I've got a feeling it's going to take at least six games, maybe even all seven games, to decide a winner in this one. Set for what should be a good one. Lineups and first pitch are next. The crowd is ready to erupt as their guys get set to take the field. Let's join public address announcer Mike Carlucci. And now your 2016 Cleveland Indians. Briefly here, a glance at the two starters who'll get the ball here in this one. And here's how the visiting Miami Marlins will line up in this one. Anybody catch your eye, Eric? Well, Matt, I'm going to be watching the speed speedster, D. Gordon. He's one of the fastest guys in all of baseball. His speed can be the difference maker. Having that kind of speed on the base path is a huge headache for opposing players. Cody Anderson will be on the mound for game four. Eric, any thoughts? Well, guys, in his last start, he pitched like a reliever. He only gave him three innings. No decision. Going to have to do a much better job here. And with a quick breather here, let's give you a look at how the Tribe stacks up defensively. It's brought to us by Majestic. Any thoughts, Eric? Well, guys, this manager loves to do the defensive shifts. So we're going to see a lot of odd formations as the game goes along. I can't wait to see how it works. D. Gordon will come forward now. And as you see by the numbers, he's off to a hot start here in the Fall Classic. Yeah, you know some guys just love being on that big stage. And he's been a big part of this ball club all season long. So it's no surprise to me that he swung a hot bat when it matters the most. Underway this evening as the first pitch is taken for strike one as we get started right on time at 7.05 p.m. First pitch, 7.05. Off speed pitch in the dirt as he takes it for a ball. Not the warmest night you'll see around here and even 50 degrees at game time. Oh, and he lays one down here, and this is going to be a tough play. Uribe over to his left. Maybe a sign of things to come here. They may want to use their speed, shake things up a little, and here he puts this one down, and they can't make a play on it. Christian Yelich will get his first opportunity here, and if you go by the numbers, it's been a disappointing start to this World Series for him so far. Yeah, he really hasn't gotten on track, and I think you have to give some of that credit to good pitching, but he's really been a bit of a non-factor so far. Still time for him to turn it around, though. Here's the first pitch to him. Pitch out. Nothing doing. And set up working the plate is Larry Bullard as you see the rest of our umpiring crew there. Well, my man Larry, he's solid. Rarely do many people get upset with his calling of the strike zone because it doesn't really seem like he favors any one part of the zone more than another. A one and no delivery. And a fastball in the dirt that's taken for a ball seemed to quicken his delivery to the plate on that last pitch. Well, you got to remember the slide step does two things for you. It gets the catcher the ball quicker so he can throw a guy out, 
or it will hold the runner on first so he doesn't steal at all. Runners off for second. Pitch is a cold strike. The throw not in time as the offline throw allows him to get in there easily. And he is in there. Runner at third here. Nobody out. Pulled toward right center field. Almonte moves over. He's there to make the catch, and here comes the runner from third as this should get him on the board. And he will score on the sacrifice fly as he's in with our first tally of the ball game. Well, nobody's going to confuse this guy with Miguel Cabrera or Chris Davis, but with the runner on third, he doesn't have to hit the ball out of the ballpark. Just has to get one deep enough out there to deliver that run from third. That's nice going. John Jason will dig in now, and he's picked the wrong time of year for his bat to go silent. Yeah, just one hit in the series so far for him, and they're going to have to get more out of his bat. But he's got to make sure he doesn't press up there, or that average is going to continue to go south. And a high strike to begin the at-bat. It's 0-1. Well, it's so important to be able to strike first in a postseason game. Get that first run in, especially when you're the team playing on the road. Hopefully you can take a little life out of this big crowd. And he misses with it, one and one. Bases are empty, one man out. No offer on that one, two balls and a strike. Fastball here that he started off a bit too far inside. It nearly got him. Well, I think it's pretty simple. The message here is stop leaning out over the plate. A well, pitcher's got to be able to work inside, so that's just a reminder there. And a fastball misses there, ball four. Yeah, a close pitch to take on a three and one count, but this might have been just a little bit outside. He winds up losing him. Giancarlo Stanton will stand in, and this pitching staff has kept his bat silent throughout the series so far. Yeah, just two hits for him so far, but you got to figure he's due. I don't think they're going to hold him down all series long. First pitch on its way. Now a fastball to start things out. Didn't miss by a lot, but it's 1-0. Just because he's thrown five straight balls doesn't make this an automatic take, especially for a guy in this part of the lineup. 1-0 count. Here it is. And a change up here, but that's taken low in the dirt for a ball. And on 2-0, this is where he's the most dangerous up there. I know it's a fastball count, but I would maybe think about something else. Runners on first with one down. Left a change out there for him, but he missed it two and one. And this is a guy who will not get cheated up there, and he almost came out of his shoes on that one. And that's upstairs running the count to three and one. You have to figure that he's really going to need to keep the walks in check if he's going to have success here. I was thinking the same thing. No free rides. You've got to make these guys earn it. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. Ground ball left side. Kipnis on to Napoli. And they get two here to get him out of the inning. Around the horn they go. Five to four to three to end the threat. Game four rolls along. We're back after this. I'm now in Cleveland to take a glance at the Tribe's starting lineup. E.K., any thoughts? Well, I know these pitchers are going to have to be careful when dealing with Jason Kipnis. He works hard at his craft, and he really knows what works for him at the plate. Wei-Yin Chen 
is the man on the mound for the fourth game of the series. EK, what's the word on him? Yeah, Maddie, he got the ball club to win in his last outing, but he did only throw six innings. They'll take it, but they'd like to see him go a little deeper. With a moment now, let's give you a look at the Miami D. It's brought to us by Majestic. Eric, what do we need to know? Well, Maddie, Jonathan Lufoy behind the plate, one of the best framers in all of baseball. We'll get an opportunity to watch him work in this one and see how many pitches he gets for his guys when he's behind that dish. Francisco Lindor will dig in here, and it's been a series to forget for him so far as you see the numbers there. With these guys just one game away from going home, he may not have too many more opportunities to turn things around. He's got to make every at-bat count from here on out. Outside target here, and he hits it for strike one. This one's blooped out toward right center field. In there, a base hit. And this is what folks mean when they talk about time in the fastball. He looks at the first pitch just to get a feel for the speed, the movement. And then when it comes again, now he knows how to handle it. And is the second baseman Jason Kipnis as he will swing at the first pitch and send a ground ball out to short. On to first, and that takes care of Kipnis, a double play. Well, no question that keeping the ball on the ground is going to be an important tool for him moving forward. This is a good start here as he bounces back from the leadoff single to get himself the nice 6 4 3. Michael Brantley will get a chance here, and you see the numbers for the series. He just has not gotten going yet. Now, and if they're going to get back in this series, they're going to need him to get back in the groove because this pitching staff has buried him so far. Chin into the windup. Here comes the first pitch. The oh, fastball here is he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. You got to figure that that man right there would be more than happy to see this guy at the plate taking his swings with two out and nobody on all night long. <laughs> so would the guy on the mound. Into his windup. Here comes the 1 0. Hit hard up the middle. And the inning will continue as that's through for a two out hit. And even if this doesn't lead to a run, it's important not to let this guy get out there and skate through the first inning, throwing as few pitches as he has. If nothing else, maybe you force him to throw another, I don't know, five, six, seven pitches to the next hitter. Mike Napoli is in with two away as he takes a ball, 1-0. Now you've got the tying run over at first. Two away. He's going to be looking to try and find a gap right here and bring that guy all the way around to school. Now we'll snap one off over to the bag. A dive, but he's back. And he won't bite at that point either. It's 2-0. Looks like he employed the slide step on that last pitch. Well, maybe you see a little cat and mouse game going between the pitcher and the runner right now. We'll see who wins this duel. Here it comes, 2-0. 3-0 and oh now. And he's got to be up there thinking, come on already. Give me something to hit.
And a good at bat that time as he lays off for ball four. And as a result, that'll move a runner up into scoring position now with two away. Early struggles here with the command. That's two hits and a walk now in the very first inning. He's going to need to sort things out here pretty quick. So striding in, one Uribe as he'll look to bring home that tying run from second with a base hit into the outfield. Trying to escape unscathed here in the first. The pitch, a fastball off his glove, and it bounds away. And he'll make it to third here on what will likely be ruled a passed ball. Well, behind the plate, he might have been more concerned with trying to frame that pitch than he was trying to catch it. They do get the called strike here, but you know what else? They get the pass ball. Chop foul over towards the coaching box. Got him swinging, and that will end the inning. Indians strand a couple. They trail this one one to nothing. Jonathan Lucroy makes his way to the plate. He'll get us started here in the top of the second. Jonathan Lucroy. First pitch of the at bat on its way. And he takes a cold strike, 0 and 1. He's probably not going to throw too many first pitch changeups. That's a pretty darn good call. Pitch swung on and hit in the air. Almonte is there. One down. Chris Johnson will stand in now for the first time coming off well nothing short of a dynamic performance last time out. Well it makes you wonder how they're going to attack him here in this game. I would bet that they're a lot more cautious with him. He's ready. Here's the first offering. And he gets ahead here with the fastball. Strike one. One and one. Yeah, looked like he hit the target. That's a tough pitch to lay off, but he made it pan out. One out, nobody on. Gets on top of one here and chops it foul right at home plate. To two balls and two strikes now. Now a swing and a miss. He struck him out. And it's two up, two down to start the second. He was really late on this one. I mean, really late. You can see where the baseball is by the time he gets the barrel through. I mean, it's darn near in the catcher's glove already. That tells me he was probably looking for something else. Here's Marcelo Zuna. As the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. That evens it up one and one. Two out, nobody on. And he comes back with a fastball, one and two now. Oh, nothing fancy. Three fastballs so far in this at bat. He could go just about anywhere from here. Lifted in the air to center. Almonte has a play, and that retires the side. One, two, three, go the Marlins. We played an inning and a half. It's one to nothing. Jan Gomes 
Strides into the box now to lead off the home half of the second inning. John Chen's got his target and delivers. And he lays off there, 1-0. That's oh, wide, 2-0. and oh. Yeah, and when that pitch starts off outside, it's much easier to get a better view of it and then just lay off. Here comes the 2-0 pitch. Too tight with oh, that one. 3-0. and oh. They already walked one guy in the first inning. Now he's in danger of losing the leadoff guy here in the second. And he gets this fastball over back to three and one now. And you know, I think it's going to be important that when guys get their pitches, they take advantage. There it looked like he was taken all the way, and he may not get another pitch that catches that much of the plate. Here it is on three and one. Three one is a fastball, and he can't connect three and two. Well, this is turning into a real dogfight now. Good swing on a tough pitch, and he'll stick around to see another one. High in the air and deep to left center field. Yelich going back. He makes the catch. A great effort to get there and record the first out of the inning. Into the box now, Carlos Santana. He'll get to take his first cuts here. First delivery to him on the way. Now there's a changeup to start him out, but it drops low and away for ball one. And a strike to even the count. One and one. Yeah, the best way to neutralize this guy's power, just keep putting pitches right there. Bases are empty, one man out. Hard hit ball to second. Backhanded. Throw gets him. Two down. Batting eight. Center fielder. Abraham. Almonte. Abraham Almonte gets his first chance here. Looking to make something happen with two gone in the bottom of the second. There's a fastball to start him off. But that misses for ball one. Up top, it's 2-0. Oh. Oh. Bases are empty here with two men out. Hey. Ball to strike there, 2-1. and one. A pretty dangerous spot for that one. I don't think it was by design. It's one thing to miss your spots out of the zone, but when you miss in the zone, especially up, that's when you tend to get hurt. He's fallen behind now, three and one. Colin Cowgill would be next. And he misses here for ball four. Already two walks surrendered in his first couple of innings of work. And this has been the big concern with this guy over the last couple right, seasons. Fielder. He's prone to getting hurt by the base on balls. Already that's two walks here in the early going. And that's something that he's going to need to get a handle on pretty quick. Colin Cowgill set to take his first cuts with a man at first and two away. Yeah, and he's going to have to find a gap to give that man on first a chance to score. Here comes the first pitch. Yeah. 
Took a little off, and it's in for a called strike one. A runner on first with two away. And here's a swing and a miss as he falls behind nothing and two. And now with the 0-2 count, he's got probably five different pitches he can throw here. So as a hitter, what are you going to do? Protecting on 0-2, so we'll do it again. A little bit off the outside, it's 1-2. and two. And that works almost like a pitch out there, you know, just in case he's thinking about it. Swing and a shot back up the middle. A screaming base hit here, his first of the night. And here's that pitch sequence one more time. Gets a hit right out of the gate on the first pitch. Then a swing and a miss puts him in the quick 0-2 hole. Fouls off pitch number three. Then a pitch that he couldn't quite get him to go for. Fifth pitch gets absolutely whacked for a solid base hit. So here's Francisco Lindor now. Oh, that one got the pitcher. Great support from his infield, though, as that's the third out. Weird way to end the inning. Some of our nation's young minds and future leaders here in attendance. Yikes. Back with more of Game 4 on the show after this. Martin Prado is into the box as we are all set to begin the third. Martin Prado. And boy, a high strike called there. That's not all that consistent, but it's strike one. Tonight, borderline calls, you got to be swinging. Tap foul at home plate. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. Well, that's a pitch right there that you've got to lay off. You know he's going to throw it on an 0-2, and that's a good job of pitch recognition right there. Still one and two as he fouls it away. Chop foul at the plate. It'll remain one and two. The one and two pitch. And mm, tough fastball to lay off on one and two, but he did, and it's two and two now. Ooh, there's a tough one to take right there on a one and two pitch, especially after fighting off so many pitches leading up to that one. And this is lifted high in the air down the right field line. Calgio is over near the stands as he makes the catch for the first down. Striding into the box, Adani Echevarria, as he'll get his first opportunity in this one. And he'll start him with a fastball that misses down and away for a ball, 1-0. Two and oh now. From the wind up, the 2 0 pitch. Too high. And it's three and oh. And there you see the leadoff man on deck. And you know they'd love to get someone on base when this lineup turns over. And this misses for ball four. The second walk he surrendered here in the first three innings. The batter, number nine, second baseman, D. Gordon. D. Gordon stands in. Ready to deliver. Here's the first pitch. Fastball's too high here. One and zero. Oh. 
pretty good speed here coming out of that left-handed batter's box. So it's no sure thing that a ground ball means a double play. Trying to bunt his way on base here, but this will roll foul. Runner at first here, one man out. And here's a ball hit in the air. Brantley on the move, and this will wind up a foul ball. Ready on one and two. Change up, and that fades down and away, two and two. Four pitches, fast, slow, fast, slow. EK, you thinking fastball here? It seems to fit the pattern, but you better not get too predictable out there. Guys will catch on quick. Changes up on him, but that's in the dirt for Revol. Now the question, do you send the guy on three and two with one out? You figure you're going to get something around the plate. Here comes the payoff pitch. Ground ball right side. One there. On to first, but not in time as he's in there ahead of the throw. Well, you could have put the first base bag out in the outfield grass on this play. You're not going to double this guy up. He's too fast. Still a pretty good job of at least getting that lead runner at second base. Into the box, Christian Yelich earned himself an RBI with a sack fly his last time at the plate. from the stretch just off the outside and it's one and oh and you figure now this would be a spot where that man might try to take second base and it wouldn't be a bad idea to hold the ball a little longer out there on the mound really bury your times to the plate you can't be predictable out there or he'll take advantage turned on that one and crushed it just pulled it a little foul Wisely lays off the cut fastball there. It's two and one. Two out with the man at first. Now a throw over to first and a dive, but he's back. Hitters count now. Here's the two and one. To two and two now. Swing and a miss. Blew the fastball right by him, and the inning is over. Marlins leave one, but they're on top one to nothing. Jason Kipnis digs into the box in the bottom of inning number three. Jason Kipnis. And he'll lay off a fastball here in a good spot, but rule the ball 1 and 0. That's a ball. First two pitches off the mark here, it's 2 and 0. And this is all about handling a guy like this with kid gloves. You know, walk him if you have to, but don't let him be the one to beat you. Outside, 3 and 0 now. He's definitely looking fastball there, and you know, he got one, but good recognition not to go up and chase it. And there's a strike as he'll try to work his way back. It's 3 and 1. Now a fastball swung on and missed, and it's full three and two. Boy, if he can get him right here, coming back from three and zero, oh, what a way to start the inning that would be. Chen gets the sign. Here's the three and two, and he takes strike three called on the fastball. One gone. 
Yeah, he did a great job of battling back from being down 3-0 to start the inning. Well, things weren't looking all that good, but he didn't panic. He trusted his stuff, and he comes right back with three good pitches to get the strikeout. Here's Michael Brantley. As he swings and hits this one, fouled off to the right and out of play. One out, nobody on. Called strike 0 and 2. Boy, tough slider right there. Had him leaning back. I don't think he could have done anything with that pitch, even if he did swing at it. Lays off that time, and it's 1 and 2. A classic strikeout pitch there on 0 and 2. It's one he loves going to, but great recognition there at the plate to lay off. High in the air out to center field. Yelich is under it. And that's the second out of the inning. Now batting, first baseman, Mike Napoli. Stepping in and ready for another shot, Mike Napoli. He drew a walk his first time up. Mm, a little tardy there. No balls and a strike. Yeah, and that's the swing of a guy hoping for a first pitch curveball right there. If he gets it, he hammers it. If not, he's about three feet too late. And Napoli can't connect yep. there as okay. that's by him for strike two. And after walking him the first time around, he's all business here in the second half out. Popped up. And Lucroy able to squeeze this one, and the inning is over. Indians go down one, two, three. It remains one nothing. John Jaso will get us started here for Miami, and he'll have backup in the form of Giancarlo Stanton waiting on deck. Behind on that one, now behind in the count, 0 and 1. The wind up and the 0 1. Chop foul right at home plate. Now the 0 2 pitch. 0 2 is a fastball that misses inside, 1 and 2 now. A little late on the fastball, but he's able to spoil that one off, and he'll get another chance. One and two, here it comes. Able to protect the plate with two strikes, and he'll see another one. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. And they come inside with the fastball, but it misses here, and it's back to two and two. And I think you have to ask yourself, was he trying to throw a fastball for a strike right there? Or was he just trying to set me up for that change up away? And he gets under the 2-2 a bit as this is sent in the air out to straightaway central. Almonte is camped under this one. One guy. Now batting. Right fielder. John So the bases are empty with one man gone. And set to stand in the ultra dangerous Giancarlo Stanton. High fly ball out to straightaway center. Almonte is under it. Makes the play, and there are two gone now. Now battle. Catcher, Jonathan Lucroy. Digging in, Jonathan Lucroy. He flew out in his last at bat.
first offering on its way. And he swings on the first pitch as this is popped high into the air on the left side. And Uribe will make the catch to retire the side. Miami down in order, but they hold a 1-0 lead. Leading off the inning, one Uribe, as they'll look Leading to get something point going point here and even this game up. And right here is an important time Number for them to seven. climb back into this one. They definitely want to even this one up sooner rather than later. Chen's ready. First pitch on the way. He slaps that one away, and the count will be nothing and one. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. And Uribe can't make contact that time. Two strikes now. And he'll try and tempt him with one in the dirt, but he'll hold back here. It's one and two. Pitch on the way. Now the fastball is right by him as he swings and misses for the first out of the inning. And so far, he's been real effective using that inside part of the plate tonight. I don't think that pitch was even in the strike zone, and Showtrack will confirm that for us right now. But I guess he felt like it was close enough that he had to take a rip at it. Here's the catcher, Jan Gomes. As he will take strike one on the fastball here, no balls and a strike. Lifted in the air out to center field. Yelich waits on it. Two down. Stepping in, Carlos Santana. He got on top of one and was a ground out victim last time. Into the windup and the pitch. And no swing, apparently. Ball one. Uh, he just about went around. He was lucky to put on the brakes when he did. That's inside. 2-0. No runs, three hits. No errors to this point for the Indians. And he gets the slider over here. It's two and one now. And now he's made most of the hitters inside conscious. And of course, that opens up the outside corner when he has to go there. Into the windup. Here's the two and one pitch. In front of the changeup, and he can't keep it fair. Two strikes on him now. Ball three. Three and two now. Two out, nobody on. Frozen on the fastball. Never had a chance, and the inning is over. Down in order go the Tribe. They still trail one nothing. Chris Johnson will step in now to lead off the inning as his guys look to maybe break the rut they've been stuck in. Yeah, and after that first inning, it's been all zeros since. And once he kind of got settled into that groove, he's been a difficult nut to crack. First pitch of the at-bat. Uh, couldn't quite hold back that time as the changeup fooled him for strike one. The pitch count there, one pitch into his fifth inning of work. Not much of a concern, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, it shouldn't be. He hasn't had any real overtaxed innings, so he should be fine for the time being. Tried to hold back, but this is popped up. And 
he'll lunge forward to make the catch for the first out. An early look at the line score here tonight as we play the top of the fifth. And boy, just one lone hit for the visitors this evening as they've been taken to task by this starter. Marcelo Zuna is at the plate now. Flied out in his first at bat. And he'll try to crowd him there to start the at bat. It's 1 0. Swing and a miss for strike one. Towards second. Throw on to Napoli, takes care of him. Two away now. Now batting, designated hitter, Martin Prado. Martin Prado is into the box for his second appearance. 0 for 1 with a fly out. Jammed him a bit there as it's fouled at the plate. And there's ball one. Fastball taken inside for a ball. Two and one now. And the pitch on two and one. Chops it foul at home plate as the count moves to two and two now. Swing and he pops him up over toward foul territory. And Napoli will look up and put it away, and the inning is over. One, two, three, go the Marlins. They lead it one to nothing. Abraham Almonte will stand in to lead things off here, and his guys have been unable to get anything going to this point. Yeah, and you think so many times in the postseason, we see starting pitching really come to the forefront. And this guy's been every bit as good as advertised so far. Sent on the ground out to second. Gordon is there. Throws in time, and that's out number one. Now batting, right fielder, Colin Now in the box, Colin Cowgill. He reached on a single in his first try. And he throws the fastball by him here, 0-1. Real good lateral movement on that two-seam fastball. That pitch is money for him when it's moving like that. So just keep on throwing. Hey. Fastball, and he's quickly in the hole, 0 and 2. And he couldn't get him to chase the 0 2 fastball. It's 1 and 2. Well, you know, when you're behind an account like this, it's all about changing your approach at the plate. You got to shorten up a little bit and just look to put the ball in play. Good job to spoil that one away and he stays alive. Set to deal on a ball and two strikes. And another foul ball. No runs, three hits. No errors to this point for the Indians. Just staying alive, putting together a really good at-bat here. A ball and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Neither guy willing to give in, and the at-bat will continue. Ah. 
late making contact on that swing and will do it again on one and two. To two, two balls and two, two strikes three. now. Well, he might have just said, look, you're going to have to take this one because you ain't fouling that one off. Bases are empty, one man out. Just out in front of that one, still two and two. This is well struck, high and deep toward the left field corner. And this is called a foul ball. Maybe by a matter of inches that time. Okay, the umpires have emerged from the dugout with the ruling. And it is going to remain a foul ball. So they had it right the first time. But if there's any doubt, go inside and get this thing right. And he finally wins the battle as this is swung on and missed for the second out. And I'll tell you what, he's throwing with a lot of confidence right now. And he's also taking some chances with location, but well, he's thinking he's bulletproof out there, and so far he has been. Francisco Lindor will stand in now with two away, trying to avoid another one, two, three inning. Yeah, this has been total domination these past few innings. They haven't been able to mount any kind of threat whatsoever. That's it to short. Does he have another 1-2-3 inning? He most certainly does. Ten straight he's retired now as that ends the inning. Indians go down 1-2-3. They're on the short end of a 1-0 score. Adani Echevarria makes his way to the box to lead us off in the sixth inning. Adeni Echevarria. First pitch coming. Here it is. And he'll start the inning with a pitch that misses off the plate. It's ball one. Now for that man right there, only the one run allowed. How discouraging is that when you're pitching your heart out and you're just not getting the support? Well, the good pitchers really don't let it get to them. They know that it cuts both ways. Sometimes you give up five runs and your guys score you eight. You just have to focus on holding up your end of the bargain. Two and zero count and the pitch. A strike and it's two and one. And if he's had any postseason jitters, he hasn't shown them to me. No, he's been outstanding so far. Drilled right back up the middle. Kipnis is there. Throw to first gets him, so the leadoff man's retired here to begin the sixth. Now batting. Second baseman, D. Gordon. D. Gordon steps in, working on a one for two game so far. Action going on now in the Indians' bullpen as they have a left hander up and getting loose. And that misses inside, one and oh. One out, nobody on. That one will get out of play, and the count evens up with one and one. And did he go around? No, he did not. Ball two. Not the first time he's felt the squeeze tonight. Yeah, he's looking and saying, what do I got to do to get a strike? The two and one on its way. Now a ball hit fouled off to the right side, and that just about got the first base coach. Bases are empty, one man out. 
Might have jammed him a little there as this is softly hit and foul off to the left. And this misses, so that'll fill the count at three and two. I think that's consistent with how the strike zone gets called nowadays. That's a strike in the rule book, but most umpires won't give you that pitch anymore. Hot shot on the ground is short. To his right, Lindor on to first, and there are two down. Now by Christian Yelich. Christian Yelich. Ready to take another shot. Went down on strikes his last time up. Yep, they sent him back in last time, so maybe they have a pretty good idea of how to attack him again right here. Chop foul over towards the dugout. Bases are empty here with two men out. And here's a curveball in the dirt that time for a ball. One and one. And this one runs a little too far in. Ball two. Now a curveball here, nowhere close. That's in the dirt. It's three and one. Well, I think it's time to attack now because these guys haven't been in too many good hitters counts. This is where you need to pounce. Three and one. Here it is. And that misses for ball four. Mm, tough take there on three and one. I mean, if this pitch missed the inside corner, it did not miss by much. But he's going to reach base anyway. John Jason will dig in now, hoping to perhaps make him pay for the two-out walk. Yeah, nothing going on earlier in this inning, but a chance to make some noise right here. Those kind of walks often seem to come back and fight guys somehow. And he'll get dirty, but he's back in safely. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Cut fastball inside, ball one. And he won't bite at that point either. It's 2-0. The one thing we've seen from this guy on the mound so far, when he makes bad pitches, they typically miss out of the strike zone. They don't miss in the zone where they can be crushed. Now a throw over. And he just manages to get his hand in. Why not? Make him get dirty. The 2-0 on the way. And there's the first strike, 2-1. and one. Yeah, you know, he probably got the fastball he was looking for, but on 2-0, and oh, you can look for one pitch in one spot. And if it's not in that spot, you take it. Swing and a ball chopped foul right at home plate. Still 2-2. Two and two. Swung on and missed, and that's the final out of the inning. One left for Miami, but they're up one to nothing. Leading off the inning, Jason Kipnis, and they'll need him to get something going here. Marlins have some action in the bullpen now as a right-hander is up and throwing. Now here's the pitch. A fastball here as he'll take a look at ball one, one and oh. And that pitch misses in the dirt, and it's two and oh now. And down by a run, a leadoff walk would certainly help the cause. He's got to shrink that strike zone here and not chase anything that he shouldn't be swinging at. Strike called, two and one. Whoa, and that's a dangerous pitch right there. But in the end, it worked out well for him. I don't think he was looking breaking ball, and that turned out to be a beauty. Oh, 
He's fallen behind now, three and one. Oh, I think he'd be real happy with a leadoff walk. Something just to get things started against this guy. Into his motion. Here comes the three and one. And the count will be full. Trying to strike him out for the second time. Ooh, he saws him off with that one. But this will get foul, so they'll do it again. Three and two. Well, you take a swing at a pitch like that, you're lucky that you only got sawed off. He's going to have to go find himself another piece of lumber. Good swing just a little early, and he'll see another payoff pitch. Into the windup, ready with the payoff pitch. Not quick enough that time, and he's lucky to get another chance. Count remains full. And he'll get to see another one. It'll be the tenth pitch of this at bat. to first. Jasso is there. And he'll take this to the bag of three unassisted for the first out. Left fielder number 23. Michael Michael Brantley, Brantley will dig in now. A single and a fly out for him in two trips thus far. And you know, I think he's had a good approach in each of his first two at-bats. He seems to be seeing the ball well and putting some decent swings on it. And he lays off a pitch in there for the first strike. Well, this guy has thrown a first pitch strike to about 50% of the batters he's faced. He's pitching well, but those numbers could be pumped up a little bit. Now a swing and a ball popped high in the air over toward foul ground. And, oh, he can't rein it in. Again, he sends it out of play. Sliders strike three called, and that's a pitcher's pitch right there. Two gone. Matt Slider's been an effective pitch for him, no doubt, as you take a look there what his pitch breakdown Mike looks like so far. Napoli. Mike Napoli stands in. He got under one and popped out his last time up. Yeah, he just uppercut a fastball. That top hand kind of dragged through the zone, which caused the bat head to drop a little bit. That's it to short. Does he have another 1-2-3 inning? He sure does. It's a baker's dozen. 13 in a row he's set down now, and the side is retired. Down in order go the Tribe. They trail this one, one to nothing. Back here in Cleveland, game four is off to the seventh inning now, but before we get it started, let's check out our game summary to this point. Giancarlo Stanton will come forward now to begin the seventh inning in what's been a very briskly played ball game here tonight. And that's what happens when you get two starters that are on top of their game. It's been great pitching, great defense, not a lot of base runners, and a very even game through six innings. Now the pitch. Left field and deep. Brantley going back, but he can't get it as it's off the wall. Around first on his way to second now, and he's in there safely. He's got a double. Now, Ben, oh, this is just a great effort out there to try to run this thing down, and he pays a pretty good price for it. We're going to slow it way down here, and this is showing no regards for his body. He sells all out for the baseball, but he can't quite reel it in. And then you see the collision. Boy, he's feeling it right now, and it's going to be worse tomorrow. 
Now here comes the Cleveland skipper up out of the dugout on his way to the mound. And he's going to motion for his bullpen here. That'll do it for the starter tonight. He'll leave after six and at the very least kept his club in it to this point. Kyle Crockett will come on now as he'll take over in inning number seven. Number 57, Kyle Crockett. Some stirring now in the Cleveland bullpen. They'll get both a left-hander and a right-hander up and throwing. In is the catcher, Jonathan Lucroy. Yes, he'll ball take a look at ball one. And this is a big spot here in this ball game. You've got to be able to move that guy up 90 feet. It's a must in this situation. No one out with a runner at second. Hit pretty well out to deep left field. Brantley ranging back, but he has no chance to make the play. It's off the wall. And a very important insurance run comes across to score from second. It's a 2-0 ball game. It's kind of a surprise to me that he wouldn't try to go for two on this play. I don't know if he got caught up in his home run trot a little bit too early or what. He's going to wind up on first base here with a single off the wall. And there he goes towards second. Drilled on the ground is short. Scooped up. Throw on to first in time. One away. Now batting. Marcelo Zuna takes his turn now, looking to add some insurance to their lead in the form of that run standing out at second base. Yeah, a base hit right through the infield would probably do it, but you can bet those guys in the outfield are going to be coming up gunning if they get any chance at all. And a high strike to begin the at-bat. It's 0-1. Hit out towards second. Throw on to Napoli. Takes care of him. Two away now. Now batting. Designated hitter. Martin Prado. Martin Prado will dig in. 0 for 2. He's flied out and popped out so far. Just getting under it right now. See if he can make an adjustment and keep that top hand strong this time. From the stretch. We'll He'll start him here with a changeup, but it's taken for ball one. Two outs here with a runner at third. Not close. It's 2-0. Too far out in front that time. He can't keep it fair. Two and one. Oh, now a ball hit up the middle, and it's going to get on through into center field for a base hit. In to score easily is the runner from third, and the lead will swell to three now in the seventh inning. Oh, just a great approach there to get him an RBI on the base hit. And with the way their guy's throwing the ball, three runs might be enough to do it. Here's Echeverria now. As the first pitch oh, here's a bit high, it's ball one. A runner on first with two away. And he fires in a strike this time to make it one ball and one strike. Yeah, that first fastball took off on him a little bit. This is a much better spot. Even at a ball and a strike, here's the pitch. No offer on that one. Two balls and a strike. And he's got to be careful now that some of these borderline calls don't get him started going downhill. Yeah, and sometimes it's really easy to dwell on those, but you have to keep looking forward. It's not easy, but you've got to do it if you want to have success.
Two balls and a strike. Here it is. Ground ball sent back up the middle. Reined in. And an underhanded throw is in time for out number three. So it's two runs on three hits. No errors and a runner left on. Stretch time here at Progressive Field. It's the Marlins three and the Indians nothing. Leading off the inning, one Uribe, as they'll look to get something going here and even this game up. And so far in this one, they're still getting shut out. So this leadoff at bat could be huge if he can just get on base because they've been held in check all game. And now pitch on the way. In there, strike one. He continues to get ahead here. He's been in complete control. I think you need to guard yourself from being overconfident, though. A bloop and a blast could still turn this game on its ear. And now the Marlins bullpen will swing into action as a lefty and a right-hander start to get loose. Now a changeup in on the hands that evens it at one and one. Well, you know, if there's anybody in this lineup capable of getting a rally started, this is the guy right here. Mine to the right side. A dive, but he can't come up with it in right as it skips right past him. He'll take the turn and head for second. The catcher, number 10, Young. And you know what? These guys have gone a long time without a base runner. You have to go all the way back to the second inning for their last one. They haven't been able to solve this guy at all. Jan Gomes will step in now as his guys look for a breakthrough here with a runner in scoring position. Yeah, that's been a long time coming. They haven't done anything with their opportunities so far. Maybe this will be the time that they finally crack the scoreboard. First pitch here misses wide, 1-0. Bullpen working behind him, but you know this guy does not want to give up the baseball. And he never does. I just don't think that's in his mentality. Chen sets. Here it comes on 1-0. And he misses low with it, 2-0. Looks like he's not going to see anything here. Yeah, I don't think so either. They gave him two shots to see if he'd go out of the zone to try to chase. And after that, I'm thinking they should just put him on. A runner at second, nobody out. Three and oh now. Carlos Santana is on deck. Fastball too high. Ball four. Well, now the further he goes in this one, the less precise he's going to be with his location. You can see it up on the screen. He's up over 90 pitches here, so he's starting to get tired and running out of gas out there. Carlos Santana will stand in now with two on here and nobody out to begin the inning. And on the mound, he hasn't found himself in too many rough spots so far. So this might be his first real test of the ball game. He's ready now. The pitch. There's a good fastball on the outside corner as you'll take a look at strike one. And this is where the Indians just need one hit. Now the 0-1. That misses wide. One ball and one strike. On the ground to the left side. Johnson's got it to Gordon for one. On to first, and they get the double play. 
First and second, nobody out. You think you're in a great position to do some damage here in this inning. And then, uh-oh, the one thing that you could not have is the double play, and that's exactly what you get. Stepping in now, Abraham Almonte. Liner towards second, and that will conclude matters here in the seventh. A golden opportunity to get on the board here goes for naught. Game four rolls along. We're back after this. Tom Gorzolani will be summoned from the bullpen now as he'll take over to start inning number eight. Tom Gorzolani. Leading off the inning, D. Gordon, as they'll look for some added insurance before the bottom half of the inning. And you know, guys, I love a guy like this leading off an inning for you. He makes good contact, and he can run. And he tries to hold back on the swing, but I think it would have been ruled a strike anyway. It's nothing in one. Looped over toward first. Underhanded flip, and the throw is not going to be in time as he's able to reach base safely. Never an easy play right there. Just trying to hit your pitcher in stride when you know it's going to be a close play at the back. And this time, the flip comes up just a little too late, and that's an infield single. In is Christian Yelich. And she'll take one on the inside corner at the knees. It's strike one. A look here at the hits per side here in the late going. Nobody out, runner on first. Turned on down the line. Napoli's there. There's one on to Napoli at first, and it's a double play. Oh, that's a sweet play coming off the bag. This ball's pretty much smashed right at him. So he takes it on the one hop and then fires on to second to start the 3-6-3. Here's John Jaso now. This will take a look at a slider here that finds the zone for strike one. Swing and a miss on the slider, and he's quickly behind, nothing in two. And you kind of get the sense that he's not really messing around out there too much. There hasn't been a whole lot of setting guys up here in this inning. He's just trying to get himself back into that dugout as fast as he can. Two out, nobody on. Swing and a miss, and that ends the inning. Nothing doing for the Marlins, but they're on top by a count of three to nothing. Colin Cowgill will stand in now. He singled and struck out in two trips. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. And who looks like he got the call there on the pitch inside. It's nothing in one. And he falls behind 0-2. Looking to put him away. Here's the 0-2. Oh, and they really bunch him up on that one as he swings and misses for the first out. You want to talk about throwing a fastball in a guy's kitchen? Uh, he came in, sat down, had a cup of coffee with him. <laughs> you aren't going to tie a guy up any better than that. So here's Francisco Lindor now. As he'll take a look at a pitch too low, it's ball one. Hey, 
inside with the slider, and that'll back him up a bit. And he'll lay the fastball in here to get the count back to two and one. Hot shot to third. Johnson's got it. Throw on to first, two gone. The second baseman, number 22, Jason, Jason Kipnis. will stand in now with two away, needing to really get something started here. And their chances of getting back into this ball game are growing dimmer by the batter. Here's the pitch. And a breaking ball backs him out of the way. 1 and 0 the count. Oof. I'll tell you, you do not want to buzz this guy's tower. That command may be starting to drift a bit. It's 2 and 0 now. Well, I'm no pitching coach, but I can see that shoulder starting to fly open a little. That ball's really taken off on him. Here's a swing and a high pop-up. Jasso is there for it. No trouble with this one, and the inning is over. The dangerous Giancarlo Stanton will get the first shot when we return. It's the Marlins three, and the Indians nothing. And welcome back to Major League Baseball on the show from Progressive Field in Cleveland, Ohio. You're Zach right, McAllister will come on now, now to start the ninth in. inning as he looks Number to keep 34. this deficit right where it is Zach for the bottom of the ninth. McAllister. And there now is John Carlos Stanton. He'll be charged with trying to get on board leading off the ninth. Ninth inning underway now as the first pitch is taken for a cold strike. Yeah, a little surprising he didn't offer it that one. That was a dangerous spot for a good fastball hitter. And good contact there as this is hit high and deep to right center. And this is taken in just shy of the warning track for route number one. How about that? Settling in now, Jonathan Lucroy. He singled his last time up. And he'll take strike one on the fastball, registering at 93 that time. Next pitch, chopped foul right at home plate, and he's behind nothing in two now. And they'll try to tempt him with a curveball, but this bounces in front of the plate, and it's one and two. All right, now you've just seen two straight breaking pitches miss away. So as a hitter, you're going to eliminate that pitch. No way does he throw it a third time. Did a good job to shorten up and protect the plate, and he'll have another shot at it here. Ready to deliver the one and two. And that's swung on and fouled straight back. Ah, got him lunging that time as he pushes one on the ground to second. In time to first, and there are two away. The batter, third baseman, Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson stands into the box. He could really use a knock here. 0 for 3 in the game so far. And he'll try to check his swing here, but he'll have no such luck. It's strike one. Nope. Here's a fastball that crowds him a bit, and it's one and one. 
Well, that two seam fastball ran a little too much off the plate, but now that sets him up to work with something away and maybe even an off speed pitch. Here's the one and one delivery. A little behind on that swing, and now he'll try to shorten up maybe and protect the plate. Here he comes on a ball and two strikes. Look out. That one almost got away from him. Two and two now. And you know, working inside is great. Even backing guys off is fine when the time's right. But you need to be careful here in the late innings when your guys are already down. Now a swing and a fly ball. Calgill giving chase, but he won't get there. It falls in. How about it? Left fielder, Marcel. Marcelo Ozuna. Zuna will step in. A ground out victim his last time. Here's a slider to start things out. Looked at for ball one. Fastball in there for a strike. 92 on the radar gun that time. Ready with the 1-1 pitch. Shot toward right center. And that'll get down for a base hit. So now they'll have runners on the corners with two away. Yeah, sometimes after two outs, you can let your guard down out there on the mound. But all of a sudden, back-to-back -back hits have given him a bit of a wake-up call here. Martin Prado stands in with runners at the corners now, looking for a third straight two-out hit and a run in the inning. Now some movement in the tribe bullpen as a right-hander starts to loosen up. He waits. Now the pitch. And he starts the number eight hitter with a strike. Nothing in one. Yeah, even with two on and two away, this is not a guy that's going to back down out there. He comes right after him with a fastball, and he gets ahead. Now a fastball here, not close, and it's one and one now. Nail biting time now in that third base dugout. Well, things are starting to spiral here, and you've got to make sure this doesn't spin completely out of control. Ready to deal. Here's the 1 1. Foul right at the plate. The count moves now to 1 and 2. Off the plate that time and a little high. It's even at two and two. Where do you go from here? I think he's set up for something off speed. If you can put that change up below his knees, you won't come within a foot of it. Runners at the corners, two men out. He got him. And exhale as he's out of the jam and the inning is over. Marlon Strand a pair. But they lead it 3 nothing. Michael Brantley will be tasked now with leading things off in their half of the ninth as they'll try to do something to prevent being shut out. Yeah, whatever they've done for the first eight innings hasn't yielded a whole lot so far. So, quite frankly, I'm not expecting too much. Inside with the fastball, it's 1-0. and oh. This is hit the other way out toward left field. Ozuna is under it, and he hauls it in for the first out of the inning. Now batting, first baseman, Mike. Mike Napoli will stand in needing to do something here to get on base as they're down to their final two outs. 
Yeah, and you just can't worry about the score right here. You just got to be able to string together a couple of base runners and take it one pitch at a time, one runner at a time. Drops in a strike to start the at bat, nothing in one. You have to say they've really had a good game plan for attacking the three, four, five hitters all game long. Yeah, and I think the only thing that's better than a game plan has been the execution of that game plan. You're exactly right. They've held this lineup at bay. Lofted in the air out toward right center. On the move is Stanton. He gets there, and that's the second out. One rebound. Stand in now is their last shot here with two away in the ninth. Yeah, just one final hurdle here before he finishes off the shutout. Watch as a fastball right there for strike one. Yeah, and that fastball still got some life to it, even over 100 pitches. Oh, and one, here it comes. Right side, hit hard. And a backhanded reach at first, but he can't flag it down. Uh, this is quickly becoming a situation where you'd like your guy to hit the complete game, but you know, once you get into that 115, 120 range, you have to be concerned. Jan Gomes stands into the box. He's 0 for 2 so far in this one. Come set, now the pitch. Down and away, one ball and no strikes. Two out with the man at first. Swing and a line drive, but this will be a foul ball. He's set, here comes the 1-1. One -one. And he lays off for a ball, two and one. That's going to even up the count at two and two. Smoked on the ground up the middle. A dive, but he can't get it. It's through into the outfield. And you just had the feeling that even though they were down to their final strike, they were not going to go down easily. And now they're going to keep this game alive for at least one more batter. Well, now the Miami manager's up out of the dugout and on his way out to the mound. And it looks as though that's going to be all for his starter here tonight. So he'll head for the showers as he stands to win this one if the bullpen can find a way to protect his three run lead. AJ Ramos is on now to try to close things down here in the ninth. AJ Ramos. Carlos Santana stands in trying to make it three straight two out hits. He's got a runner in scoring position at second. And you know how good hitting can prove contagious in an inning. Let's see if he can keep it rolling. He's set. Here it comes. Chop foul right at home plate. It's strike one. The 0 and 1 delivery. Now a swing and a ground ball. This should do it. Throw on to second for the force, and the ball game is over. You got to like the work rate out there. Two pitches, one out, one save, and one tight victory for the guys. Hard to do it much better than that.
Time for one final check of the line score as you see the key players there in this shutout victory. Fellas, when you're on the big stage here at the World Series, you want to make sure you bring the A game. And this man right here certainly did. He's our top player of the game. And, Maddie, I think you're absolutely right. Sometimes guys get caught up in the pressure of the World Series and their performance suffers. But he was obviously not rattled out there, and he came through in a big way. So that just about does it. For EK, Psycho, and the crew, I'm Matt Vaskersian. You've been watching MLB The Show. For more, get those smartphones and tablets out and head over to theshownation.com. The Marlins win it three to nothing. Good night from Cleveland.